It is nine o'clock. Whoa! <laughs> See, I have this problem. If I if I talk with my mask on, I have to turn the speaker the sound way down. I'll go turn it down during the prelude because I don't want to listen to it anyway. Um, and then I'll yell when I take it down to talk a minute. Uh, so good morning. It's good to have you here or on Zoom or at some point this afternoon on YouTube and Facebook. Um, we are fortunate today to confirm, reaffirm Matthew Hagelin's baptism in using the rite of confirmation in the Lutheran Church. So there's nothing unusual about that piece of it. The unusual piece is, first of all, that all of our confirmation students are picking their time and date to do their paper and be confirmed so that they might be able to have a few folks in the sanctuary. And that's the unusual part. The sanctuary is not full and the choir is not singing and everybody's not here in one time. So we, uh, we're unfortunate that that's the time we live in, but we're grateful that we can make this work. Aiden, our Spencer Ponell is uh, watching via Zoom. So he's gonna learn today um, how to write a paper. So I hope you've got a good example for him, Matthew. He'll need all the help he can get. Um, I don't have any other significant announcements for you. Um, there is no choir on Thursday night. There hasn't been any choir for six months and there won't be for a while. Um, and I, and um, Blood Drive is not till December, December 15th? 10th. 10th, December 10th is the next Blood Drive. The food pantry um, served 38 households last week. Again, um, significant numbers. And then a, just a reminder that if you're interested in the um, the uh, meal, the uh, drive-through meal, lasagna meal on November 17th, uh, we encourage you to call in to Laura and get your reservations made and let her know if you're seeking vegetarian or sausage meat um, lasagna. So with that, I will go turn down my uh, microphone and we, oh and thank you to Taryn Lance who will sing the hymn today. For those of you who are guests of the Heglins, Taryn has been Matthew's confirmation teacher um, for the last two years, so um, it's nice to be able to have her join us and uh, be a significant part of this service. And to all the rest of you, uh, welcome to Lakeview. This is just so weird. It's so weird to welcome guests in this room with masks on and all kinds of weird stuff, but anyway. Um, so I will be quiet. I invite everybody else to be quiet. I invite the Zoom people to mute and uh, we'll prepare our hearts for worship during Lynn's prayer. Uh.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And let us pray. Parent God, you give us the gift of faith. May we uphold that faith by putting it into action as we love you and love our neighbors. Through the gift of the gospel, help us to always remember that we belong to you. In your name we pray. Amen. And the reading today comes from the 22nd chapter of the Gospel of St. Matthew. Then the Pharisees went and plotted to entrap Jesus in what he said. So they sent their disciples to him, along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere and teach the way of God in accordance with truth and show deference to no one, for you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us, then, what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. Then he said to them, Whose head is on this, and whose title? They answered, The emperor's. Then Jesus said to them, Give, therefore, to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard this, they were amazed, and they left him, and they went away. Give to the government the things that belong to the government, but give to God the things that belong to God. Humans are God's coin. We belong to God because we bear the image of God in creation. Because of that, our life consists of something far greater than an abundance of possessions. Because we, each one of us, bear the image of God, we are called to live in accordance with God's will. And living in accordance with God's will is what we give back to God. God's will includes forgiveness, justice, seeking justice, showing mercy, loving, and having faith. We are called to have faith. We're called to trust in this gracious God. So for the past 19 years here at Lakeview, my entire time here, and um, in a bittersweet way, this is my last uh, opportunity for confirmation this year, um, these students, because I will be retiring. But for the past 19 years, actually that makes this the 20th year, that was 19 in November, students have been required to write a paper talking about their faith. They've all done it. And this year is no different, even though we have a pandemic. So it's somewhat unusual for those of us adults to sit down and to actually seriously think about the faith that we often talk about and claim that we have and claim that we live by. It's unusual for us to really think about what it means to have faith. There are no wrong and there are no right answers because everyone's faith is shaped and formed in different ways. But the common denominator is that our faith is grounded in God. That's that gracious God in whose image you and I have been created. So this morning, just like every other year, I'm going to invite Matthew Hedlin forward to share his faith paper with you this morning. Matthew, you may come up and you may remove your mask because we want to see what you look like. I forgot.
To me, faith in God means faith in what happens eventually will turn out good. In you know, as long in the as long as in the long run everyone will eventually go to heaven, assuming they believe in God. He has a plan for all of us. He controls our fate and interactions with others in our lives. Faith in God means we trust what happens will be an important part of our destiny. Along this line, I believe that faith in God means that we should know he's looking over us and protecting us from what exists that may harm us. He protects us from the evils of sin, and he does this all of this and guides us to a better place. When I say my faith has saved me, I mean that my faith has shaped who I am as a person. It's shown me who I need to be, what to advocate for, and what I need to do during my years on this earth. It's shown me what bears an immense amount of worth to me. It shows me what makes me whole and what I believe in. My faith has saved me by being there when some people in my life couldn't be, and it's what I believed in for as long as I can remember. The people in my life that have help shape my faith include my parents, my grandparents, my aunts and uncles, my cousins, my friends. All these people have shown me what faith is within one's family and within one's general vicinity. They've shown me how to have faith in the people near me and how to trust and who to trust. They're the ones that have taught me my morals and what, aspire, what to aspire to be in life. My friends have shown me what to and to not have faith in. They've shown me what to advocate for and which side I should take in an argument. They haven't exactly chosen these things, but they've definitely helped me choose what to believe in and what I see to be right or wrong, justified or unjust, needed or unnecessary. They've shown me what to fight for. They've shown me what some people are doing in this world and why it's just so incredibly evil. I intend to continue to show my faith in the covenant God made with me in baptism by continuing to show others integrity in my life and to continue to keep showing my faith the way I've been doing it along so far. I'll continue to show this by being an example of God's teachings, helping those in need, and showing generosity to others in my life. Some Bible verses that are important to my faith and strongly speak to me about faith include Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1, now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Psalm chapter 119, verse 30. I've chosen the way of faithfulness. I've set my faith. I've set my heart on your laws. James chapter 1, verses 5 and 6. If you need wisdom, ask our generous God, and he will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking, but when you ask him, be sure that your faith is in God alone. Do not waver, for a person with divided loyalty is as unsettled as a wave of the sea that is blown and tossed by the wind. A specific incident in my life that has affected my faith and shown me faith by other people was the time I crashed my bike and I passed out. This happened about three years ago, August, and it was pretty close to here. It was Wheeler Road. I was with Alex. Do you remember this? Well, that's good, maybe? I don't know. Eh. Like, right as we were turning onto it, I felt this weird sort of sinking feeling in my stomach. Sort of like right before doing this. <clears throat> Suddenly, everything got fuzzy and dark, and I felt because, you know, I was moving somewhat quickly. I landed on my right side and I was scraped up for a little while. No, yeah. Thankfully, a nearby really amazing Samaritan saved me. He bandaged me up, made sure I could move, got me water. I think he fell right after he got me bandages and stuff. That's pretty funny. Um, <clears throat> he made sure I could get home safely, made sure I could still physically move, and I did. And it just kind of sat there for about a week. It was during the summer, so it wasn't too bad for like school and stuff. And I know that during that moment, God was looking over me and protecting me from most of the injuries I could have received during that crash. 
My faith affects how I behave in certain places by telling me how I should treat others through my faith. I know that others, I should treat others with kindness and respect. I should do this even if, if other people have different opinions than my own. Unfortunately, the world kind of sucks right now in multiple ways, just politically and covid I guess. If more people were faithful and nicer to others, the world would be a much better place to live in. I show other people that I have faith by praying that things will go well. I pray for people in my life to make sure that God's looking over them and protecting them from things like, you know, COVID. I pray whenever I need to and whenever I'm thinking about these people, whether I show it or not. I show people in my community that I have faith by acting on the things that I care about and sh by showing people the things that I find faithful. I should be faithful about integrity because to me it is the most important thing just to have as a quality. I like doing the right thing because I know it helps me and the people around me because I mean, in the long run I just hope that I help a lot of people by caring through my faith. And that is it. Thank you, Matthew. You can come back and have a seat. Sounds like you better stay walking instead of riding bike. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Those crummy things happen sometimes. I'm going to invite Taryn forward, and she is going to sing We Walk, Not Ride by, by Faith. That's her husband yelling on the computer. We try to ignore him. Are you all warm enough? Good, because we just spent $50,000 to put a new boiler system in this sanctuary, and you can tell because we're having consistent heat, unlike many previous winters. So we kind of have to adjust the temperatures because I am roasting. So you can tell Todd whenever he gets up that the heat is working well, and. Uh, Dear friends, we give thanks for the gift of baptism and for Matthew Hagland. 
one with us in the body of Christ, who is making public affirmation of his baptism this morning. And therefore, I will call him forward to come and stand right here. You may as well drop your mask. Because we want to see your mouth. <laughs> Matthew, I have some questions for you. First, I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? If so, answer, I renounce them. I renounce them. Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? If so, I renounce them. I renounce them. Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? If so, I renounce them. I renounce them. And do you believe in God the Father, in Jesus Christ the Son of God, and in the Holy Spirit? If so, answer with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead, and on the third day he rose again and ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and will continue to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Very good. I hope Spencer was listening to you so he knows how it's done. Matthew, you have now made public profession of your faith. Do you intend to continue in the covenant that God made with you in holy baptism over at that font, right? I did it. I didn't hold his head under too long, did I? Well, yeah, I know. <laughs> I put too much oil on it, dripped in your eyes. The profession in holy baptism was to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ Jesus through your words and deeds, to serve all people, and to follow the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. If so, answer, I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. People of God who are gathered here in this room, who are on um, the computer this morning and who will be watching this service throughout the week on Facebook and YouTube. Do you promise to support Matthew and pray for him in his life in Christ? If so, answer, we do and we ask God to help and guide us. We do and we ask God to help and guide us. The Racine people are much quicker than the Wyota people. I don't know what the deal is, but anyway, just mentioning. Matthew, I'm going to have you kneel here. And I'll invite your parents and baptismal sponsors, you know, right at the rail. Just face this way. There you go. Parents and baptismal sponsors and Taryn, if you'd like to come forward. Sure. Step right over here so that the We typically lay hands on Matthew's head, but given these certain uncertain times, I invite you to do that if you're comfortable, or if you'd rather not get that close to him, which I'd highly recommend. Um, <laughs> you can stand with your hand out like I'm going to do, okay? So um, if you'd like to prepare for the blessing. Great God, stir up in Matthew the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. You may remove your hands. Congratulations, Matthew. Here's your certificate. You may applaud Matthew wherever you are. <laughs> As he returns to his seat with all the rest of you. You too. <laughs> Yeah, I know.
Let us pray this morning. Faithful God, enlighten the faith of all of us. Give us the courage to put that faith into action as we respond in the world. Thank you for creating all humans in your image. Therefore, open our minds to remember your image as we deal with racism toward black and brown people. Help us to remember your image as we respond to indigenous people. Help us to remember your image as we make decisions along our country's borders. Continue to watch over Matt and his family. We lift to you the people of Louisiana who have been inundated with storms, flooding, and wind. Bring hope to that area. Bring relief to the victims of fire on the West Coast. We pray for all schools and hospitals and all personnel as difficult decisions and procedures have to be implemented due to the virus. Give us all the willingness to take the steps necessary to prevent COVID deaths and the spreading of the disease. We lift to you all who grieve this morning. Bring healing comfort to all who are sick, including Mary, Pam, Georgia, Terry, Mike, Santona, Lynn, Lois, and anyone else whom we now name out loud or in the silence of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Amen. I invite you to join me as together we pray the traditional words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to spend a moment in meditation as Lynn plays. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.
man. Go in peace. Love God, love your neighbor, and love yourself. Thanks be to God. Amen.